Hello, everyone. We'll uh, let people trickle in, get started. Everything looks to be uh, up and rolling today, so uh, we'll give it a second to, to kick off. But uh, in the meantime, we'll do some introductions. My name is Nate Jones, uh, CEO and co-founder of Structurally. Glad to be back today. Uh, and today we have uh, Mike Boyle of Premier um, Mortgage Resources. Um, Mike, do you want to tell us a little bit about how long you've been there, kind of where you're coming from, where you're at, uh, and what's going on. Yeah, I uh, appreciate you having me on. Um, obviously, you know, we go back, what, a little bit over a year uh, when I met you and Andrew uh, and Robbie and, and Rex. So, like, we were met at the Wailopo conference, I believe. So, yep. um, yeah, things are, things are going good here. Uh, it's not as crazy as everybody thinks it is. Uh, you know, Seattle is maybe downtown in the chop, but... Business is good uh, for real estate wise. It's it's booming. It's it's a hot market. Um, Premier Mortgage. We're based out of Idaho, uh, but our office is here in Everett, and I've been here what four years. Um, yeah. So me and the Lola Bridge boys, Doug, uh, Lisa. Yeah, holding it down for for the west side. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna dive into. Uh, we have a lot to share today. Uh, this one. This one's exciting. Um, like. You know, like Mike said, um, I've known Mike and uh, his partner, Mike Novak, uh, on, the no on the real estate side for a little over a year now. And they just do things at a whole another level. And that's what we're really excited to share about today uh, is some of the essential kind of factors that every lender coming from Mike Boyle's perspective and realtor uh, coming from his partner Novak uh, perspective uh, needs to make more money. So we're going to kind of dive into the tech side of things, the process side of things, the scripting and conversion side of things. So we're going to kind of cover every little aspect of, of how they act, how the relationship needs to go. Because, um, you know, one thing that coming from kind of a personal side, I just bought a house, uh, my first house through, uh, I guess it was an interesting time because my first house purchase was during a global pandemic. Uh, so maybe that was the problem, but honestly, my lender and realtor relationship when I bought my house was terrible. I, I couldn't deal with both of them. They didn't talk. I was the go between and it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel good. They were never on the same page and I was never on the same page. So I would say without getting, you know, into my personal story, those details, that's not the way to do it. That's what I hope that everyone's listening um, doesn't take away from this. Um, and, you know, I just think that there's a lot of opportunity to work closer together because, um, you know, there's, there's so much lead generation that can be shared. There's so much lead conversion tactics that can be shared all to, to, to boost both of your businesses, both the realtor and lender side of the business. So that's kind of uh, what we're going to be talking about today, uh, breaking it down into uh, kind of those different categories and with that, we'll kind of just jump right in. Um, first of all, I like to come at things from the tech perspective, the logistics perspective first, and simply my number one key, and I hope that Michael talked to, talk to this a little bit, is talk to each other. It, it felt like in my story, my lender and my realtor literally did not talk to each other, let alone use any of the same technology. I don't even think, you know, I, it, it was just they were coming from completely different worlds. So what I mean by kind of talk to each other is literally actually speak to one another. First of all, I think that that goes without saying, but use tech that talks to one another. If you can use um, a technology tool like here on the right, this is structurally, of course, we work with both lenders and realtors in a collaborative fashion. So if you want to jump into our conversations, you know, we're here to uh, nurture, engage, and qualify leads. If you're seeing these conversations, we give you all the tools necessary to both jump in there, collaborate, even send an internal behind the scenes notes to one another so that you can talk and not, you know, step on one another's toes and know what's going on. So first of all, use, use tech that talks to one another and when possible, use tech that integrates with one another um, you know, we have a ton of integrations with CRMs, uh, which we'll kind of get into, uh, Mike's side of, of the tech he uses, you know, one integration we have is with Sierra Interactive, Follow-A-Boss, 
Lion Desk, uh, Boomtown, Sync, you name it. We're sending all of our conversation, all of our product is accessible within your CRM. And I hope that your lender is, you know, in your CRM to some capacity. Um, that's one thing that I really, really wanted to bring Mike on to talk about was just, you know, I think that um, what, what he's doing with Novak is, is just next level. You are literally working in some of the same tools they are side by side with them. And I think that that not only allows you guys to work a lot faster, work a lot more leads, work a lot more efficiently, but it gives your customer uh, experience, uh, you know, not something that I had to deal with. You guys are always on the same page and you guys are always talking about one another, always selling one another and always on the same page. So can you kind of talk about like how you're literally plugged into to the real estate team? Yeah, I mean, it really just to bounce off of what you just said, like you hit it on the head with uh, the relationship side of thing about your real estate agent and your lender never seem like they're on the same page. Well, I mean, dealing with leads or dealing with any consumer, like that's the worst case scenario. Like you're never gonna use those people again. And if you do, you're gonna have to be very hesitant. You're gonna be, you know, just checking every little thing that you possibly can. Like that's not fun for anybody. We, we wanna make it an experience. Like if you're operational centric on any side of it, you're shooting half your business in the foot. If you're customer centric, like we are and how we cultivate with Novak, it's like, the client experience is the most important thing and how, how we uh, integrate into Sierra and I live in there. If, if it doesn't happen in our CRM, then it didn't happen is how we, we do it. So with a lot of us, you know, we get the phone calls, the one offs from the client to our cell phone. Well, what I do is if I do get that a text or a sub, uh, call, then I pop into Sierra, then I throw a note in and say, Hey, I log a call in Sierra. So then those real estate agents that's tied to the uh, transaction, it's not just Mike, it's everybody on the team. Um, they know exactly where the file's at. They know exactly what the conversation was at. And it's an ongoing thing. You're never going to be perfect. But if you can reflect on, hey, how did this transaction go? And then make the slight adjustments. Well, you have everything right there documented so you know how to adjust quickly instead of taking six months and losing you know 10 million dollars of business mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and it, i just feel like you know i i know that there's a lot of tech out there that has uh you know kind of started in either the real estate or the mortgage space that has grown to support both lenders and realtors and in, in their same platform you know i know a lot of crms are starting to do that so you know one easy takeaway from this webinar if you aren't doing this yet with your lender or with your realtor just invite them to your crm and treat it like the single source of truth uh no matter what put everything in there <laughs> just like what mike was saying if it's not in there <clears throat> it didn't happen right so i would just say you know that's just kind of the basics to what we're doing here and, um, and really why, why wouldn't you you know why wouldn't you partner with them and have them in there like, what, what are you hiding? Like, if you're not all in, you know, like my wife looks at my te text messages in my cell phone, I ask her to see what somebody said. Half the time it's Mike Novak, you know, reaching out to him, hey, we need a pre-approval ASAP. Okay, perfect. Like, that's easy. Like, we, we know what to do. But, you know, it's the same thing. Like, build a relationship that you're so secure in that you don't care if they see what's happening in the files. And that's the biggest thing with our culture is like, we, we want to know where everything's at. We, I, I want to know when Mike has success and he gets a, you know, $1.4 million listing from a radio call. Like I'm, I'm going over there and, you know, giving him high five. Uh, you know, I like it when he gets that. I don't get anything out of it. Who cares? It, it's family. Like build the relationship around, uh, around trust and, and who you're working with. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's just no reason to not be collaborative in that way. You're not competing. Uh, and I know we're going to kind of talk about towards that, towards the end here about um, just trusting that you're not competing in, in the cross sell aspect, knowing that you always have one another's backs in the sale really helps to drive, drive, you know, initial conversion. Mm -hmm. um, 
But along the same, you know, using your example, if, if Novak gets a $1.4 million listing, you know, and, in, you know, you're not involved from the, the loan side of things, who's mm-hmm. to say that, that that lead won't turn into a referral to someone who needs a loan? Right. And if you're sitting here unaware that that transaction even happened because it has nothing to do with you or, you know, too insecure to congratulate him on that, <laughs> then you're not going to get that future business ever. Yep. So, you know, I completely agree with what you said to start, you know, don't shoot yourself in the foot for doing, doing those things uh, or not doing those things. So really it's just about having the trust and the processes in place and trusting the process, which is actually a perfect segue <laughs> into uh, the next slide. Uh, so trust the process. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your process, you know, kind of where are you getting your leads? Um, how you're collaborating on them, how you're, you know, staying in your own lane, but also working behind the scenes to collaborate and also your follow-up kind of what's that process look like for a customer journey done the right way. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's also, you know, ever evolving, but at the same time, like treat a customer how you want to be treated, right? The, the lead comes in, clearly they have some kind of uh, you know, tangible reason for clicking into, you know, whatever source you're, you're buying leads from or wherever your business is coming from. Um, so they want to talk to somebody like they wouldn't be on the website if they weren't interested. And even if you have the people that are, you know, like, you know, the looks you lose, it could be a business transaction, you know, six months to a year after, like you have to treat everybody the same. Um, but lead comes in. We believe that, uh, I mean, it's, it's common sense, right? Real estate is the sexy side. Mortgage is the essential side, right? You, you can't buy a house unless you're cash without a mortgage. But those people are clicking on websites because they're looking at homes. They're not clicking to look to see, you know, what the, the breakdown is for the, the loan scenario on that. Like, that's not fun. That's the stuff that's essential, but it's, it's not the fun stuff to look at, uh, especially with millennials and just you know, society these days and being locked at home, like you're on the computer clicking on things because you have nothing else to do. You know, uh, that that's how the home buying process starts usually. And so we always, uh, you know, for example, lead comes in, boom, Novak's on it within minutes, like automation text might go out or personal phone call might go out uh, right after that text. But it's, hey, we want to be here for you. And we're showing you and half the time when people answer the phone, they're like, wait, is this really Mike Novak? Like, this is really Rachel Novak calling me? Like, they don't expect the people that are on the team, um, you know, to be calling them. And then it's, they will vet things out, see if it's, you know, set, a, set an appointment or get that person in front of us to make sure that they're actually a viable client. And it's boom, always the same process. So, hey, I've been, you know, working with these people for a long time. We want you to be in the best position possible to buy. And this process we know. So we want you to, you know, hopefully you can get approved with them. Boom. Then it's over to me. Vet things out. Boom, 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 boom. Go through the process. Boom. Right back to Mike. Like they're ready to buy. Get out there. Go show something. Like you said, it helps you uh, handle bigger volumes of clientele when you're taking yourself out, staying in your lane get this stuff done, boom, on to the next process. And then with us on the lending side, we have a team here, uh, you know, Kyle, Cameron, Riley, Doug, Lisa, myself, uh, Kurt, Kale, like we stay in our lanes, but we know more hands on deck than the more clients we can help. And they all know the whole entire Novak team, just like I do, um, but that's a big process. Like it, it, it takes an army and if you have this large sandbox that has the same goal and is driven by the customer being successful, then it makes things much smoother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, you know, just exactly what we have on the slide here. It's really about sticking to your lane when necessary, trusting one another that everyone is, is going to stick to their job and, and trusting that your tech tools, hopefully your CRM, the process you've built is going to work. Right. And that- are actually updating it so that you're not forgetting a follow-up or forgetting uh, a task or not doing a task or anything in between. It's, it's mm-hmm. really about literally trusting the process. So do you guys, I, I can't keep up with where you guys are at right now. 
Do you guys have <laughs> ISAs? Uh, uh, no, I, we we found that it's uh, you know right now it's hey these agents are the best closers that they have, yeah. so why not put them in front of the agents first? Yeah. Um, because we have so many things built out um, in our system for a follow-up plan, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer. Like, they're the best closers, and then don't hand it off to somebody else, hand it off to me, because then I'm gonna close it and get them, because if it's the warm-up, right? It's third-party validation. If Mike says that, hey, these people, and he still gives options, but 99% of the people are gonna work with us because they want to give that agent uh, the best you know, ammunition to get into a home. Uh, if that agent is comfortable with the process and that c customer goes to that lender, well, guess what? That agent's getting that deal because they just went with the lender that you know, he said to, to use. So it, common sense goes a long way, but common courtesy of, hey, we want the best for you as a, as a customer. So this is what we think should, you, know, you should do. Yeah. So kind of where I was going at with the ISA question to, um, you know, I get that agents are extremely good at closing. It's mm -hmm. usually uh, their bread and butter. It's usually why they go in the business. Right. Sometimes they're not the best at follow-up. Uh, right. So what I know that you guys do it at, you do the follow-up like no one out there. You guys do follow-up amazingly well. So what are some of your secrets if you can share them? <laughs> Well, I mean, it, the, the systems and the templates that we have built out with, uh, you know, you and Andrew and everybody over there at Structurally, and then plus, you know, Robbie T, like, you can't go wrong. Like, it, if you put the systems in there correctly, and you have the process dialed in, yes, I say that they're the best at closing, but that's not to say that we don't have systems put in place to make the follow up that much easier to where yeah. plug and play to get them back in front of us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like how you guys, you, you would warm up a lead for me and then say, hey, Mike, you should probably hop in and jump in on this because it, they're ready to go. Perfect. Yeah. Guess what? Now that person just moved from a C follow-up to their 30 days out and their A follow-up and now I'm taking over the conversations. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that stuff built out in 2020 and if you're not using these masterminds like Nate and Andrew and Robbie uh, the boys over at Y Lopo, like if you're not using that, you're, you're behind the curve. It, it, it's a whole different age. It's not, hey, I'm going to shake your hand or, you know, hey, Billy from down the street is going to send over a client to me. That's good luck. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I, I've been thinking about this a lot more lately. It's just the, the follow up piece to a lot of what realtors and lenders are doing now is done for them to some degree, if they want it to, you know, right. some people can still throw their hands in the air and say, I'm going to set a follow-up task or 300 follow-up tasks every day to hand write, you know, an email or dial 300 of my worst leads, you know, that there's a time and place for that, but is it the best use of your time? Probably not, not at all. Like you said, you know, it's a lot better, you know, percentage wise, if you can hop into a conversation of someone who's actually said they want to move, you're that much more likely to close someone. You can't spin, you can't spin gold out of crap. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're just going to sit here and dial your C leads to death, A, people don't like answering the phone. We've talked about that time and time again on this. Right. B, even if they do, they probably don't want to hear from you and they probably aren't even ready to go. So I think that that's something that you guys have done uh, extremely well. It's just you tee up the right opportunities at the right time to to give you and your agents the best uh, chance to you know close. But I mean, you guys, the lead volume that you guys do is also just insane. And so you know, I think that the systems that you have in place have to be just phenomenal. So I don't know if there's anything else that you can kind of talk to about those. If you, um, I'll just kind of go to this slide. Uh, cause I do think it could play into this a little bit, you know, like what you, you mentioned like a C lead and uh, moving to an A lead. We've talked about that in our webinars with Robbie before, you know, we've, if, if anyone's listening and wants to go back to look at those, it was something we did on the ISA radio or a webinar, maybe 
I don't know, six months ago with Robbie T of Hatch Coaching, where we talked about these A, B, C leads, but like, what are you doing in your CRM um, to, to kind of segment those leads and, and create a for, forget-proof process in business? Yes. So, I mean, uh, Mike and I, you know, a couple of years back, we, we actually flew down to Arizona. We built out our own CRM just because we wanted to be able to control it. Um, but in doing that, um, we figured out like a good follow-up plan, right? So that transition to today that same follow-up plan is set in place and it's obviously been tweaked here and there, but your A leads have to have a different follow-up cadence and structure in comparison to your B's or your C's. Uh, you know, A's are 30 days out. Like clearly you need to stay on top of those people. You need to be in their ear because um, they're ready to go. Uh, now you go to a C lead, you know, if you're 60 to 90 days out, that's a different follow-up cadence. And maybe they're a C lead because they just take a lot longer to get me documents. Like, you know, that we, you have to have, uh, you know, pick up on mannerisms and tendencies from your clients too, uh, to be able to categorize them correctly. Um, but if you're not always thinking about it, um, and at the same time, it's, it's, it's a lot of culture too. Like, like you said, like we follow up at a high level. Well, you're, you're working with, you know, if anybody on here knows Novak, like he's a freaking machine, like, and it's very contagious. Um, uh, and it, you know, it's Mike and Mike, like we, we talk about it, but it's not just, you know, us, like we have an entire team that does so much stuff that makes, you know, makes me look great. Uh, I can't say that I'm the best at anything, but I know I follow up to the death because, I got a family at home that I need to feed. Mike's got three kids and a wife that he needs to feed. Everybody, I'm, I'm fully invested into both teams and their families, not just on my success or on Mike's success. It's if I don't show up today, then I screwed the pooch for them for two months down the road with that client that should have been a close deal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's just taking that, that step further. Um, but yeah, system wise, like obviously, uh, you know, why Lopo use it? Like you, you're dumb if you don't use it, you know, with Rhea, with you guys, with homes, like th those systems are built out by very, very intelligent people. I am not the most intelligent person. I went to college to play basketball and then I was a garbage man for 10 years before I got into this, but I know how to talk to people and I know how to close. Right. Like, so that goes a lot further and I can relate to a lot of people's uh, situations just because of life, life events. Novak's the same way. The dude is a genius. He's a pocket genius. Like he, he might not act like it in front of you, but that I've never heard, never seen anybody that listens so well. And mm -hmm. the dude is like a beautiful mind. I always call him Russell Crowe, even though he's a T-Rex, he's just, He's always thinking, always, always thinking, how can we fix things? How can we make it better? Uh, and it's, it, it's, it's contagious for sure. Yeah, that's a great, I think, segue into uh, our bonus that I think that you, you wanted to talk about quite a bit and that I think is, is definitely key. I never really thought about it. So kind of shifting into like the scripting side, you get someone on the horn, you finally get them to respond after your tenacious follow-up you've trusted the process and you've talked to one another. I tried to do some alliteration with the three T's. So everyone listening has some takeaways to repeat. We've talked about talking to one another, both literally and using your tech, trusting the process, building a process out that you actually trust and use and <laughs> tenaciously following up. Once you actually do all those things, you should hopefully have someone who actually wants to get a loan or buy a house with you. How can you guys go about having each other's back, working it, working off one another and actually converting that lead for both of you? Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it plays into sharing the system, uh, plays into cross-selling each other. Uh, if you are in the same system, you know what's happening. So if, you know, let's say Dale on the Novak team misses a, a text message thread that I'm in and it's talking about, Hey, wanting to see the house. Well, now I can just be like, Hey Dale, go pop into the system. Uh, you know, client a wants to go see this place, but they accidentally reached out to me. 
like you can just play off of each other. And then uh, in the, the pre-approval process, it's, I can sell anybody, but at the same time, when I say, hey, yeah, I used Dale for my own personal uh, purchase two years ago, and I can use anybody in the industry. I trust him with my own personal, then you should know that you're in great hands with Dale. And he probably already signed a BAA, or if he hadn't signed a BAA yet, and we're getting them approved, well, now that client's definitely going back to Dale because I just validated him and took down any kind of walls that that client might have. And that's the biggest key. If you can cross sell at a very, very high level, then you can be very, very successful in this business. Because mm -hmm. knowing that that real estate agent has your back and you have theirs through it all is gonna be what you didn't have in your transaction, right, Nate? Like, mm -hmm. you have no idea if that seller even likes that real estate agent, if they've ever talked, and then putting you in the middle, you're the middle man, well, mm -hmm. I would rather be the middleman sending my clients to Kyle and to Dale. I'll be the middleman if they want to reach out to me, knowing that they're getting handled by these two. I don't yeah. want the client to be the middleman, bouncing emails and back and forth between you know us and them. Right. Yeah, I think that goes a long way because it wasn't the experience that I have uh, or that I had. Um, yeah, yeah, that was kind of rough and. You know, I think that that's the right way to do things. I think that uh, obviously there's, um, and this is the, the part that I don't know a whole lot about, but, you know, obviously there's the side that you guys have to, or Novak has to continue, like you said, recommending other lenders, but 99% of the time he's going to, you know, they're going to go with you because mm -hmm. he has that cross sell. He has that validation um, in his back pocket that he's been using. Um, and that's just, you know, I know that you guys do, so much on the lead gen side with Ylopo, with uh, pay-per-click, with retargeting, with radio, with television, billboards, maybe uh, everything. But, you know, PC, SOI, if that's what that's called, past client sphere of influence. Yep. Um, you know, the cross-sell aspect goes into building that PC, SOI pipeline. Right. And, you know, that's just because every time it's just habit, I assume, Every time you're talking about real estate with someone in your sphere of influence, you right. drop Novak's name. Every time he's talking about real estate or getting a loan, he's dropping your name. Right. And it naturally builds that up. Well, I mean, and it, like with right now, like all these people, we're not trying to build a pipeline to create transactions. We're trying to build a pipeline to create forever clients because we, we go, we partner with our events. Like, we're closing X amount of deals with these people and we want these people to know that they are forever clients. We still put together events and we post them together. Like those people are meant to, if you have any real estate needs, future with anybody in your family, anybody in your sphere, you can know that we have your back and you're gonna send it to us. Mike's had clients that have closed deals, you know, a few years ago before we were really up and running that they wanna refi. Well, guess what? We know how quickly we can close a refi and Mike does too. So guess who's getting that, that, first, that first crack at it? Or those leads that come in, they're already approved, but they're with you know, A and B, C mortgage from you know, Nashville, Tennessee. Well, guess what? You don't know the Washington market and nobody, none of the listing agents over here know who you are. So good luck closing that transaction. Guess that's an easy cross sell for Mike to be like, hey, you can use whoever you want. Don't get me wrong, but you might want to get a second opinion with a local lender that knows how to crush it and close in this market. Because there's a lot of listing agents that see a, a, a pre-approval come from Kyle and that have Mike's letterhead on there and say, okay, this deal is done because I've already closed like five or six transactions with these guys and they're gonna close real quick. Mm -hmm. So it goes to the top of the pile when you're fighting against seven, eight offers on, you know, $325,000 house that, you know, sometimes get 20 offers. Yeah, no, absolutely. It makes, it makes a ton of sense. Um, yeah. So I love, I love that you guys do that, the cross sell aspect. And I love everything that you guys have been doing. I wish my transaction would have had Mike and Mike, uh, <laughs> to my house. uh, unfortunately I don't live in Seattle. I live in Iowa. 
Uh, so <laughs> that's good. We'll just we'll just refi you here pretty soon and just uh, get get you taken care of. <laughs> I, yeah, I just I hope everyone listening uh, can uh, can take that model, the Mike and Mike model <laughs> that you guys are using, uh, and 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 bring your lender, or bring your realtor. I think I think the kind of key word that I've been kind of coming back to, like what what do you guys do different? It's it's really just about like bringing the lender or the realtor bringing you into the fold, bringing you into the know and trusting one another. It's not hiding things. It's not um, using different systems. It's using the same system that you've both agreed on, that you've both built in building your pipelines together and knowing you have one another's back. And I think the best way to kind of summarize that is just bringing one another into the fold. Um, it it's goes yeah, a good way, like an easy way to put it is like, we're family. Like we joke around with the Mike and Mike thing, you know, Mike and Mike in the morning, because uh, we wake up super early and work out together and then we're in here early. But like, if we didn't have our team behind us and the support, we're nothing. Like there's so much stuff behind the scenes that, you know, Mike gets all the, you know, the hoorah because they're not names on it. Right, perfect, it should be. But there's so many people behind the doors, Christian, Carrie, Robin, Jin, you know, that support the team. And then you have Dale, Justin, Chuck, Rachel, all just crushing it out there with Mike. But like, if you don't have all those pieces, and then on my side, if I don't have Kyle sitting with me, walking me through everything on how to, you know, figure out the numbers or crunch all the numbers, like, I'm nothing. Like, and it's the same with you, like you and Andrew, yeah, you guys put it together, but you don't have Pete, you know, helping you get this stuff together today. Good luck. Nate's, mm -hmm. Nate's too busy. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, there's so much support and the word that I always look at, especially with our situation and how we built the culture here is family. Like mm -hmm. we love each other. Uh, we love seeing each other succeed. Um, you know, we have a stupid thing over, you know, on the Novak side, they have a bell when they set appointments. If I see somebody that set an appointment or if I follow up and I set an appointment right after they did, I'll run over that. I'd ring the hell out of that bell just to annoy people. Uh, <laughs> I go over in the morning, I give, you know, everybody the COVID, you know, little elbow, elbow bump. Shoot, I've been doing that for, you know, two years before it was cool uh, with the COVID. So like, it's just, you know, it's the culture, man. Like we just love each other. We love being in each other's company, um, but we also love crushing business together because it makes it that much more fun. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's been fun to, uh, to listen to you guys from, you know, just building a business perspective. Um, I hope that, I hope that everyone listening can, t can take away from what you guys have done. Um, you know, if you want to shoot me or, or Mike an email, you can do that here, I guess. We, um, I know personally, Mike, you know, is, is, uh, he's a busy guy. He, <laughs> both of you, Mike and Mike are very busy people. Um, your, your pipeline is huge and your business is growing extreme, extremely fast. But I know that you, uh, you, at least with us have always taken the time like to do this webinar and to answer our questions about how to help build structurally the right way for lenders and realtors. So a, I appreciate you doing that. Appreciate you taking the time. Uh, and B, for those of you listening, I know Mike is is here to help. He wants to see other lenders succeed. He wants to see other realtors succeed. He wants to see people succeed. So if you have questions that we didn't answer, you can shoot him an email, shoot me an email, shoot us a chat. Um, love to learn more. Um, Mike, do you have anything you want to close on? Anything else to add? Uh, I mean, I think you hit it on the head. Yeah, we, we have no problem, you know, setting some time aside uh, to chat with people. I mean, I've talked to plenty of real estate agents in the Y Lopo community on, you know, like, where do you take this conversation with the lender? Or we're, we're thinking about going to one lender. Uh, mm -hmm. How does that look? What kind of questions should we be asking? I have no problem helping with that. Uh, you know, yeah, we're busy. We have a family outside of this too, right? Like my three yeah. boys, they swallow me up. My wife, you know, when she gets home, she wants a break. Uh, especially kids have been home from school for three months. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's what we signed up for and it's what we love to do. So I have no issues. And, you know, to you and everybody over at Structurally, like, you know, we're not, we're not here today 
without you guys, like with what you guys have done, uh, what you've done for me, the conversations we've had um, with Robbie over at Hatch, like, it, you know, it, it takes a big, big army. And it's not, don't, I think the biggest thing that a lot of people forget about in this industry is get over yourself. Like ego, egos don't, they don't work in this business anymore. Um, it, you know, it's not 1970 where you're closing, you know, six transactions and you're good. Uh, because guess what, you know, there's no YSP or anything like that anymore. You, you get over your ego. It takes an army. Um, I challenge everybody on here to look at your own business and look at your the structure that you have and what are you doing and what are you not doing? Uh, and what are you doing with your lenders or your real estate partners that you could improve on? Uh, write it down. If you don't write it down, it didn't happen. Absolutely. Well, cool. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, uh, sharing some knowledge and uh, being available for us and for everyone. Um, for those of you listening, um, this will be available. Uh, we'll email you a recording. These slides will be available. Uh, you'll be able to listen to the recording on our YouTube page, just Structurally on YouTube. Uh, and we'll be on our resources page. So structurally.com or structurally.com slash resources. So check it out. Um, I think this fits in really well to a lot of what we've talked about in the past with other people like Robbie T at Hatch Coaching, uh, other ISAs, how to, how to bring in the lender uh, into conversations. This really plugs into a lot of things. So there's a lot of content on our, on our YouTube page and on our resources page that I think that, that can tie into this really well. But for now, we appreciate it, Mike. Um, have a good time out on the West Coast and uh, hold things down for us out there. We'll do, brother. Appreciate right. you guys. Love you guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone.